Hello, I'm Eric Reno, and this is a video for Photolia, the stock photography community. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Adobe Camera Raw and how it's similar in both Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, and Lightroom. So let's jump in and see what's what. So here I am in Bridge, and I've got my image already selected. It's Red Fox. Of course, it comes from Photolia. Now, this is a JPEG, and they don't open in Adobe Camera Raw by default, but we did cover how we can do that in a previous video, and there should be details up on the screen. Right, let's click on our Adobe Camera Raw icon, and in it comes. Now you can see by default that we come into this panel, and if I hover over the top of it, you can see that it's called Basic. Now that's all we're gonna be covering in this video, but I did say in the introduction that we'd look at similarities between Photoshop Elements and Lightroom. So let's do that right now. You can see that we've got these sliders on the right-hand side and a bit of information, including a histogram at the top. If I now scooch over to Photoshop Elements, you can see that we get the same information. We don't have so many tabs at the top, so this isn't quite as complicated as Adobe Camera Raw with Photoshop, nor do we have so many tools at the top there. If I now scooch over to Lightroom and go into the Develop module, you can see we have exactly the same settings here as well. It's exactly the same software engine that's running all three programs. For this tutorial, I'm gonna stick with Photoshop, however, so I'm gonna go back just a couple of times, and there we go, we're back into Photoshop. So let's take a look at what we've got here. At the top, there's a histogram, and if you've been using a digital SLR for some time, you'll understand histograms, but for those that haven't, there's a brief outline. What this does is shows us the amount of pixels there are in this image of different luminance values, going from the left, the darkest, to the right, the lightest. So in this image, we can see that most of the luminance in this image is in the mid-tones. We can use the histogram to make sure that we've got a nice spread of luminance across the image. Of course, this isn't always true. If I just cancel out of this one just for a second and we go into this image, I'm sure you're ahead of me already, but the histogram now is right up to the right-hand side because most of this image is in the highlights and the whites. Okay, I'm gonna come back out of that one and go back into my original Red Fox. Now in newer versions of Adobe Camera Raw, what we can do is we can take the mouse up and into the histogram and we can see what slider affects what part of the histogram. So here it's blacks, then shadows, then the next one says exposure, but that's not exactly true. Exposure does the whole image. Highlights and whites. So I know that if I was to use the highlights slider, I would be adjusting the luminance values of these pixels here and shifting those around it to keep the spread as it is. Let me just demonstrate. So let's take the highlights and you can watch those pixels shift over to the right a little bit, but the others are just. I'm gonna take it back down to the center here. Now what's really cool is that we can also do this on the histogram. So I can come here into the shadows, click down and drag to the right and you can see that I'm adjusting the slider. I'm gonna to go to the left and take it down as well. And then back to the middle. There's also some other information. If I take the mouse away from the histogram, you can see underneath that we've got some information about how this photograph was taken, or at least the camera settings. F3.2 at 1 320th of a second at ISO 640. And the 7 to 200 is the lens that was being used at 200 millimeters. So if you're struggling with your camera settings, this is a good way to see how other people have set up their camera to take the shot you're interested in. Let's go down into the sliders now. This first one, temperature, as the name suggests, alters the temperature. I can take this slider to the left to make this a much cooler image, or I can take it to the right and make it much warmer. We can also give this a bit of a tint. If I've got a bit of a green cast, if I take it away from the greens, you can see that we can alter that too. 
I'm going to put this back to the middle. Now coming down into the sliders, here's the exposure. Contrast, which is really a legacy settings, but is helpful in some images. Then remember those highlights and the shadows, the whites and the blacks. I'm going to put these back to the default. Underneath that we've got three more sliders, clarity, vibrance and saturation. Saturation, as the name suggests, will give more saturation to the colours that are already there. I'm going to take that back to the middle. Vibrance makes the colours that are already there a bit more vibrant, as the name suggests, but doesn't oversaturate it. What's really nice about this slider too is it will leave the skin tones until last. Let's take that back to the middle. Then there's the clarity slider. This is an amazingly powerful slider. I'm going to take it right up to the maximum to start with just by clicking down. And you can see the difference it made straight off the bat. Let's go to the other extreme, much softer. For this image, I might want to choose just to bring it up just a little bit. Now it's always a good idea to choose clarity first, because you might have noticed that it made some of the darkers much darker. So then we'd have to rearrange these as well. Okay, I'm gonna reset this just by double clicking on it. And this one, and this one. And then click default to get everything back to how it was. You may also notice that there's a drop down menu right at the top here. This will help us adjust for different lighting conditions, whether it be tungsten or flash or daylight. In this case, because it's a JPEG, that isn't available to us. But if this was a raw image, we'd see much more there. We can, of course, choose auto, and it will try and adjust it for us, or as shot, and then back to custom if I wanted to change it to my settings I'd made before. I'm going to change it back to as shot. So there we go. That's a brief tour of the basic panel in Adobe Camera Raw, in Photoshop Elements Adobe Camera Raw, and the develop module in Lightroom 5. I'm Eric Reno. Thank you very much for joining me here for this video for Photolia. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment. I'd love to know what you want to know about Photoshop, Photoshop Elements, and Lightroom. Until next time, bye-bye for now.